What's up everybody, it's Priyan Joni. So today I'm gonna to show you how to improve your live stream video quality when you're using only a webcam. But first, a message from our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you can search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. And brand new for 2020, you can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJYEARLY and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. So one of the things that a few people said they were surprised about with my live stream was the fact that I'm actually not using a professional camera like I am right now in this video. But in my live stream, I was actually just using my MacBook Air's built-in webcam. And today I'm gonna to show you guys two of the ways I got the best quality when I'm just simply using the webcam on the MacBook Air, whose video quality is not something it's really known for. Okay, it's a little dark, but this is what my camera looks like in the dark. You can see some of the colors it kind of boosts the exposure by lowering the shutter speed, increasing the exposure, opening the aperture if the webcam has an aperture. And what happens is, is when it's this dark, it gets, there's more motion blur and the quality gets really grainy where you don't see the actual details of objects inside the frame. So number one, really simple, the solution to that is, you just simply add a light. When you add a light, it forces the exposure down. It increases the shutter speed so that there's less motion blur. And when the exposure is down, there's a little less graininess that you see as opposed to when everything is dark. Now, the reason why it does that is because the built-in webcam is designed to automatically change its settings to compensate for the amount of light. That way it doesn't get too bright or too dark when the ambient light changes. But sometimes you'll notice little movements might make the automatic exposure change when you don't want it to. Sometimes you might be wearing a brighter shirt, like a white shirt, and that can really throw off the automatic exposure. So to get a more professional look, you're gonna have to be able to control and fix the settings on the webcam. Because right now, when I change the brightness of the ring light, this is what happens. I'm gonna go half down. And then the exposure compensates for it. You see how it gets brighter and darker. And then if I do it again, it's a little dark now, but you see the little changes that happen. So let's bring this back out. To get a professional look, you just wanna keep it at one setting based on the one light. But it's gonna require that you have a good light source to begin with. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the exposure, increase the shutter speed, and maybe process the video in a few other ways. So when it comes to the built-in webcam, once you have your light source, there really is no factory controls for controlling the exposure, or the shutter speed of the webcam. What we're gonna need is a third party utility that allows us access to those controls. What I have here is an app called Webcam Settings. What this app does is it allows you to override the automatic exposure of your webcam and you can fix the type of settings you want it to hold at. So to use it is while I have the webcam already open inside OBS, I go up here and I select show webcam settings panel. Now we can control the brightness here. 
the contrast. But the thing that we really want is the shutter speed and exposure. And that's actually dictated by this exposure time knob. Now, this slider doesn't actually behave like you want it to. You would expect that by lowering this all the way down, it would, well, it got dark. And then when you bring it all the way up, it's supposed to get brighter, but it, it's still a little dark. It's a little weird, it's a little touchy, but I kind of figured out how to make it work. Basically, you have to just play with it until you get to a dark setting. So what I do is I take the slider, bring it down. It went down two notches. And it might be a little too dark for me. So now I bring it up. It went up two notches. Now it's a little too bright. So now we got to go back down. Yeah, just right about there. I think. Yeah, that looks good to me. So now what I do is I take the brightness and I just bring it up from center. And I don't want it so much that everything is faded because the grain will show again, but you just want it just to compensate for a little darkness so that we can see a little bit more in there. So after that, I do increase the contrast just to retain so that the blacks are as black as possible. And then for saturation, I do increase it by a little bit so that I get a little bit more vibrance out of the colors. And then sharpness, I brought it up about 25%. I don't, I'm not even sure if it's that obvious, but let's, let's bring this up. Yeah, it does, it does work. The white balance doesn't seem to... Now you'll notice that my exposure got really, really bright when I started playing with the white balance app. This app doesn't behave exactly perfectly, but once I got my settings in place and I leave it alone, it tends to stay there. Just make sure you don't close out your webcam because you're gonna have to reopen this app in order to govern the settings once again. So my exposure went up when I touched the white balance and I didn't see any white balancing happening. So we're just gonna leave that alone, but we're gonna try to get back to where, yep, just about there. And now that we're all set, we are gonna minimize that. And now everything is fairly even, maybe a little dark, maybe I might want it to be just brighten just a little bit more. So let's just bring up the brightness just by a little bit. So basically now the quality is fairly even. There's a little bit of grain. It's still a webcam, but it's not at a point where it's fighting itself, being too bright, being too dark. And just to show you that the webcam settings is actually holding its exposure settings, watch when I turn off the ring light. Now it's really, really dark in here. It's also pretty cool because you can see the ambient lights when it's dark like this without it being overexposed. So the App Store actually has three different apps. There's the one I got, Webcam Settings, and then there's Webcam Settings Control and Manual Camera. I haven't tested the other two, but you might have better luck. Let me know in the comments if the setting controls are less finicky. But the overall point here is, if you're using a webcam, make sure you have a light source, like my ring light, and also use a webcam settings utility tool to control and hold the settings of the webcam so they don't keep automatically changing as you're moving around in your live stream. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or anything to add about improving the quality of your live stream video when you're using a webcam, please leave them in the comments section below. Would love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that I might not have covered in this video today. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, 
please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Stay healthy and take care.